Hey guys, um, on the request of my, I think it's my movies, or it's like my team movies, or something like that, uh, I'm going to do a review on Lifeboat. Uh, this was 1944, the only film that Alfred Hitchcock did for 20th Century Fox. The only film Tulula Bankhead was in. And uh, screenplay is by John Steinbeck, who also wrote The Grapes of Wrath. And uh, there's a couple other famous books I can't remember that he wrote. But um, it features Hume Cronion, who was also in Shadow of a Doubt. And he wrote the screenplay for Rope. So he's been, he was involved in some pretty good Hitchcock movies in the 40s. And he recently died, I think it was earlier this year or last year. Features William Bendix, Tallulah Bankhead, Canada Lee. But Lifeboat, um, pretty interesting movie. You would think a movie that takes place, the, the entire movie takes place in the lifeboat. You would think a movie that takes place in a lifeboat would not be that interesting. Like, Buried takes place in a coffin throughout the entire movie. Or Devil, which is like a new movie that came out, takes place in an elevator throughout the entire movie. Or Rear Window takes place in an apartment room the entire movie. Some of those movies are good. This is one of them. It's about... Um, the very beginning of the movie is you find Tallulah Bankhead. She's like wearing a fur, fur coat, has all of her luggage and everything in there. She's a famous reporter. Her name is Constance Porter. And she's in the lifeboat all by herself. And people start, you know, swimming to shore on the lifeboat. And they end up picking up all these passengers. And they end up picking up a German who is floating in the water and we find out that this German is the captain of the U-boat that sank the ship that they were on and so basically this movie is about how they struggle to survive on this lifeboat you know and the complications that arise and uh, basically th throughout the movie you know as it goes on they start to uh, Especially like towards the really end, they start to get really crazy and they start to get really hungry because they lose all their food and water in this big storm. And we find out that the German was like leading them to one of his supply ships and he's like a complete asshole to these people. Like you don't, at the beginning of the movie you, th you feel kind of sorry for him. But then, once you find out what he's really done, you want him to die. And, um, complete idiot. Well, um, and that, that's really the movie. It's a gripping, gripping drama that holds you at the edge of your seat, wondering what's going to happen next. And, uh, it's a really brilliant Hitchcock film. And this wasn't successful when it came out. People... A lot of people liked it, people hated it, but there were critics that said this film was pro-Nazi, you know, it supported Nazis, and if, I'm not going to tell you what ha exactly happens to the Nazi in case you haven't seen it, but once you see the end of, once you see Lifeboat, you're going to know that this film is not pro-Nazi. Um, this movie is far from pro-Nazi, in fact, uh, any person that thinks that it's pro-Nazi is an idiot. But Hitchcock made this foreign correspondent and I believe he made I Confess and um, Sab I think he made Saboteur around the time of the war. I know foreign correspondent and this were made during the war. But all of his movies made during the war had something to do about war. Definitely an underrated Hitchcock. People should watch this more. Um, it's a really interesting Hitchcock. Um, definitely different from a lot from anything that he's done. I, you know, like a lot of his movies follow like the wrong man. 
persona since like hence frenzy frenzy um saboteur uh north by northwest uh can't think of any others at the moment but you know he kind of made the same movie more than once and this is like t totally different from anything that, he, that he'd ever made um it was non nominated for three academy awards um definitely definitely i don't this isn't necessarily in my top five but if I had if I had a top ten, it'd be in my top ten. But it's not in my top five. The fa the faults are probably that it takes place in the lifeboat throughout the entire movie. It I've never I I've never gotten bored while I've watched it. But um, it's it, it really is a stroke of genius how you could write an an hour and a half long movie that takes place in a boat in the ocean but the fault is that um, I, I don't like the way that um, the movie ends I, I, I really wish they would have had um, well I, I don't even want to tell you how the movie ends but I don't like the ending. I wish they would have explained more of how these people get saved. I mean, I want to tell you they do get saved, but I wish they kind of would have explained it more. And um, it would have been kind of cool to, you know, see them escaping the sinking ship onto the lifeboat. But it, it has some faults, you know. I mean, it's not... His masterpiece, but it's definitely, um, definitely one of his top best forties movies. But that's Lifeboat. I hope that satisfies you. Um, this movie, you, you, when you watch it, you're not gonna expect what happens. You know, it's kind of, you know, you're. It's a lot of his movies might be kind of predictable, but this one, you know, you don't really know what's gonna happen next. And that's what's really good about Lifeboat. It's a really good movie. But uh, that's Lifeboat, um, really good Hitchcock, um, again, definitely would be in my top 10, definitely one of his best movies that he made in the 40s, but totally underrated in my opinion, check it out, it's a great Hitchcock.